Hello and welcome to Cool Your Damn Jets. Um, what I want to do today is to go over Google, the company in general. Uh, I did the video earlier and uh, things have moved since then and I think it's time to revisit Google. Um, the, the earlier video is not on this channel, it's on another channel. Uh, but anyway, what, what I think is going on with Google um, overall, I think Google is no longer paying attention to its user very much. And it is suffering from some sort of corporate attention disorder. Um, and depending on which part of Google you interact with, uh, it's going to vary. Um, some some sub some subunits of Google can be better than other subunits, uh, but in general, it's very inconsistent, and uh, I think it's problematic. Uh, don't get me wrong; I think some Google some Google products are very great, uh, like the Nest Protect that I've uh, covered on this channel before. Um, I have almost no complaints about that uh, product. But there are other places where it's it's a complete mess. Um, one thing in particular is the Google TV. And I'm not going to rehash every problem with Google TV in this video. Uh, I invite you to look at my Google TV videos and see um, for yourself uh, how, how bad it is. But I think it's a beta product that should not have been released. Uh, Google released it upon the world, and now we have to live with it. Uh, if you're a lucky one that hasn't bought it, don't buy it yet. Um, but that's only one thing. There are problems with other Google products, and I'm going to go through the products right now. Uh, some of the products, some of the problems, and some of the products. Um, so, for instance, YouTube Music. Um, I was forced to go from Google Music to YouTube Music, which was a transition that I did not want. And I told Google that I didn't, did not want it, but you know they're not going to listen to me. Um, so the GUI on Google Music uh, is the same as the website. So the web, I mean, you need to go to the website and see it for yourself. But the website, I don't think, is very well designed to find stuff. And the Google and, and the interface on the devices, like the phones uh, or the tablets or, the, I guess, the computers, um, is the same as the as the website. And it's, it's in my view, it's a mess. Uh, it's difficult to find stuff. It's difficult to know how to do stuff. Uh, it is slick, but not very useful uh, for regular folks. Um, the migration from Google Music to uh, Google uh, to YouTube Music was a complete disaster for me. Uh, I was able to move my music, but everything that had the video associated with it became just music. It didn't have any rec recognition that, you know, oh, this piece of music has a video. So when I do the list, I should put it with the video. It was it was just giving me pieces of, pieces of music. And for me, the video is, it is somewhat important because, um, you know, I've, I've had chemo, I had a stem cell transplant, and I was in a, in a bad shape for a while. And... Um, in order to do exercises, what I was doing was putting on YouTube with music videos and dancing to it. Um, and without the video, I mean, I can still dance to just to the music, but I prefer to have a video. If there's a video with the piece of music, I prefer to see it. I prefer to have it in front of me. And um, so that was a, a whole mess. Um, there's the shuffle function also. Uh, it's been... Uh, on and off, you can, still cannot, to this day, as far as I know, I've not find a way to shuffle a playing list when I play YouTube on my Google TV device. Um, the function seems to not be there at all. 
you can shuffle if you're in the app and possibly also on the website. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I think you can shuffle on the website. But the problem with those two is that, and now I don't know what the latest status is of that function uh, because I've done other things. But um, the shuffle function uh, in the app uh, sometimes is broken. Um, and sometimes sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it does work um and i don't know uh why it's that way um what i've discovered sometimes is that i do the shuffle in the app and what happens is that it picks the first song at random but then all the next songs are those that appear after the first song in the playlist instead of going randomly from one song to the next um and it's a big it's been a big mess um and i have other problems with youtube music but they're they're smaller um and this is a good enough example so i'm going to go to google voice i've uh, had a problem also where i wanted to port a number to google voice and um it didn't work and there were the error message was cryptic and I complained about it and the person just said, well, try again. Well, why am I going to try this thing again? If you can't give me a reason why it did not work the first time around, it's cryptic. I eventually abandoned the, the notion of using Google Voice because my number is not porting to it. Maybe I would try again and it would port, but it was important for me for that number to become active and be able to receive calls on it. So I didn't want to put it into transfer hell. Um, so I gave up on Google Voice. Uh, Google Assistant, uh, many, many problems with that. We have home automation. So if I, I quickly learned to stop telling, in, telling it turn on the lights, because if you say turn on the lights, oftentimes it's going to understand turn on all the lights. You know, if you have any hesitation if you're in your speech and you like uh, turn on the lights, the mm is going to be interpreted as all the lights and it's going to turn on all the lights in the house. Uh, if you have a small apartment with two lights, it's not a big deal. Uh, if you have a house like we do, with a whole bunch of lights all over the house that are controlled by home automation and turns on everything. That's annoying and they have, as far as I know, they haven't fixed it. Even worse, um, if the, sometimes the device just doesn't know what you're talking about, you know, it doesn't quite understand and it, decide, and it interprets what you want as you know, you may, you may be saying lights, and that's what I do now. I just say lights, uh, and it turns on the light in the room that you're in. But if it doesn't understand lights, and sometimes it happens, it's confused, and then it's going to turn on all the lights, um, which is also annoying, but doesn't happen that often. The other thing that does happen, and it has happened to me, is that if the device doesn't know where it is in the house, and you tell it lights, is going to decide, oh, he wants all the lights on. And this happened to me with my Chromebook. I was in the living room, my Chromebook was on my lap, and we have a uh, display in the living room. And usually the display picks up the command and will understand properly and will just turn on the lights in the living room. But uh, sometimes it decides, um, it has happened one time that the device did not pick up my voice. The Chromebook picked up my voice. The Chromebook heard lights. Then it said, well, I don't know in which room I am. Um, let's turn on all the lights. <laughs> which I think is is very, very stupid from the, on the part of the Google engineers. All of those things are choices. If the device doesn't know where it is, it could ask, which light do you want to turn on? Or, you know, I don't know where I am, so there's no point in me turning on all the lights, repeat your command more precisely or whatever. 
those are all choices that Google engineers can make. And they've taken the stupidest approach, which is whenever there's any confusion, turn on everything or turn off everything, because it also works the other way around. If if, if my, my Chromebook had picked up, turn off the lights and and you know when we're in the living room and so on. I picked up, turn off the lights. It would turn off all the lights in, in the house um, because it doesn't know where it is, uh, and and that's pretty uh, stupid. Um, another thing I've noticed with Google Assistant is that you can set. Uh, your assistant to support two languages. And for a while, I supported English and French, which didn't cause more, any problems. It may be because the, the support for French is better than the support for other languages. Uh, it, it could be that French and English are too distant. And it's probably one factor that they're too distant to confuse one for the other. But at some point, I added, I switched off the French support and I added uh, Norwegian and specifically Bookmall. And Bookmall sounds more like English than French does. And I started noticing that sometimes like, the, the devices that were listening to me were confused whether I was speaking English or Bookmall. And it it was bad at some point. Like sometimes I was saying, uh, you know, good night, and it was understanding good night, um, or vice versa. And, you know, it was confused about which language, and it didn't matter that much. But it seems that they've done an update recently, and, and it looks like now the commands, if you give a command in English, it goes to the English bucket. If you give in a command in, in uh, book mall, it goes in the book mall uh, bucket. And the two buckets are separated. So if I tell the device to start something in English, this is what happened. I would tell the device to start something in English. I would say play nature sounds or play this or play that. Um, and it would start it. And then I would ask it to stop. And then I would say, I would just say stop. It so happens that stop is a word in both English and book mall. And it wouldn't understand it as book mall. And I could see it on the display because it was, the spelling is different. So it was spelling it in a book mall and it was understanding it in book mall. And it looks like they've decided to put buckets. So if you give a command in English, you say start this in English, and you want it to stop and you say the command in Norwegian, it's like, oh, well, it's a Norwegian command to stop. I'm not going to stop the sound. <laughs> uh, that's what it looks like. I cannot tell you if it's what's happening, but it feels like that, that the, the commands you give are in, in language buckets. And if you gave something in English and then you try to stop it in Norwegian, it's not going to work. So I was yelling at the unit, like stop, 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 until I decided to just use the screen and press the button to stop it. Um, then after that, I decided to just remove the support for uh, Bookmall because I thought it was just too much trouble. Um, I I like being able to give it commands in Norwegian, but. It doesn't, you know, and it's a bit repetitive also. So once you, you know how to do some of the things, you, you know, you just know them. And it doesn't help with language learning. Um, but it's annoying. And again, it sounds like they made a decision over there to do things a certain way. And one thing I've always been wondering about is why can't you, why can't you have different startup commands? Why can't you kind of prime the computer uh, or the device to understand you in one language or the other? So, you know, maybe the standard trigger could, uh, you know, in English, could just 
started uh, understanding it in English, maybe you need to use a different trigger for when you want Norwegian or French or some other language so that you're priming the device to understand you in the language um, that you want, which will take care of that. But G Google doesn't have that, and I don't understand it. Their engineers are seem unable to produce that feature. I don't know why. Um, then there's the integration of Google Home and Google Assistant with the devices for the control of the house. Uh, at some point, I ended up with a, a ton of duplicated devices all around the house. Like, a, a, usually the Google devices were not duplicated, but everything else, like a switch, a Z-Wave switch would appear twice, and it, it was a big mess. And the only way I found to solve that was to delete my, to recreate my home from scratch, which is uh, not simple. Uh, I had to delete the home I had created. And, and of course, my wife was kicked out of the home when I deleted it. I had to reinvite her afterwards. Um, and then you have also Google Home, Google Assistant interacting together. And then you have, um, the Nest app also interacts with that in bizarre ways. Uh, when I deleted my home in, in Google Home, and also deleted my home in the Nest app, and I had all the Google protects around my house. So those were cast into the, the ether. It's not, you don't get the warning that says, if you delete it here, this is what's gonna happen. It's just, del it deletes. You may have a problem that says, do you, are, you really want, are you really sure you want to delete your home? And then why would I, why, why am I not sure? I want to delete it. So yes, I want to delete it. And then the consequence is that your Nest devices are, they're gone somewhere. Um, so I had to go through all the devices around the house, all the smoke detectors and the bell in front and re-register them with uh, the Nest application. Um, and I also had a weird problem where I had to reboot my phone because one of the devices didn't want to register with the phone. And the only way I found to fix it was to reboot the phone. I tried a whole bunch of stuff before then, and I decided to reboot the phone because I was at my wit's ends, and it worked. Um, and another thing that I'm now remembering, but I didn't put in, in my uh, list of grievances, is... Uh, if you now buy the new devices, the new cameras that Google sells, and we bought one, we bought the indoor camera to check on the cats. Um, so if you buy one of those new devices, which are called Nest cameras, they don't go with the Nest app, they go with the Google Home app. And to me, First of all, once one is it's a step backwards in some user interface. I compared the two user interface, Google Nest versus Google Home. Uh, and I prefer the Google, the not the Google Nest, the well, I don't know, Nest, the Nest, the Nest app. I prefer the Nest app interface for going through history and stuff like that. So it's it seems to be a step backwards in terms of usability and it's also confusing because you get the nest camera and you have the nest app and you think well it's going to work with the nest app you know um, when you register it you, you expect it to show up in the nest app but it shows up in google home it's confusing um it's not user friendly and this is one of the points that i'm making that google doesn't seem to care about users anymore if they ever cared about users. I think at some point they did because they needed to build their company. But at this point, I think Google is like, the user experience doesn't matter. If we if we, if we we throw a dart and hit the bullseye, great. If we throw a dart and end up somewhere else, eh, people are still going to buy our products, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, all right, and so enough with Google Home and the Nest app and all that stuff. 
Other problems I've had with Google is that way back when, actually when I was a student, uh, and that was a while ago, um, I, I had two email addresses. I had one email address that was associated with Gmail, and I had one email address that was associated with a domain name that belongs to me, and the domain name still belongs to me. And the two were separated, and only the Gmail address was interacting with Google. Eventually, I got tired of uh, managing my own mail server because I, when I the the email address that was on my um, on my um, domain, I had a mail server that I was managing myself to take care of all the mail. And at some point, I decided, fuck that. Uh, I don't want to do that anymore. Um, there are multiple reasons why I didn't want to do it. So I moved that email address to Gmail. So now you can still send emails to the same address that I always had with my private, with, with my, it's not a private dump, domain, but with my own domain, with my name in it. Uh, you can still send emails there, but the mail server that handles those emails is the same mail server as Gmail, or I don't know how they do it internally, but it's a, it's a Google it's a Google server. So now I have two accounts with with Gmail and with Google that are important. There's the old account. The this is the the, the handle of the old account. The old account, and then this is a new account. And this has caused all kinds of problems when I want to do things like like contacts. Just take a simple example of contacts. Because I only had the old account uh, at first with Google, all my contacts were in that account. And it, doesn't, it didn't matter which account I was using to send emails, all my contacts were in that account. When I poured in my new account to Google, then what was happening is that when I wanted to use that email address, I had zero contacts. There was nothing because I had never put anything in those contacts. So I had to take my contact list and I researched it how to merge lists and stuff. And there was all kinds of stuff. There were tools on the internet and this and that. I decided that the simplest solution was to export my contact list as um, a file. I don't remember which format they put it in as a file and then import it in the other account. And I pretty much don't use my old account anymore for uh, contacts. I had to do something similar with the calendar because I used to have all my events in the Google Calendar one on my old account, and then I had to switch over to the new account. It was more practical because I, my, my new account is the one that received the most emails and the most important emails, and those with appointments and stuff like that. So uh, I moved it over. And then, uh, then there was a problem, I, and I don't know how I fixed it. There was a problem that the when I, I had my good night routine on the on the devices in the home, I was saying good night to Google, and it was it it tells me the weather tomorrow and my appointments and stuff like that. But because it was still linked to my old account, at some point it was just not telling me my appointments anymore because my appointments were in the new account. And I researched how to do it, and I don't know how I managed to fix it, but I <laughs> at some point at some point I, I ran into a dead end where somebody was saying, "Well, it's just not possible to get it to read the events from another calendar." But I did something and fixed it. Fixed it um, because now I can. It tells me what I'm gonna have uh, the next day, what appointments I have. Um, but I don't know how I fixed it. Um, and that's another thing which is very annoying is that when you have multiple accounts with Gmail and you try to manage them, the management seems very arbitrary. It's like, 
yes, you can do this, but you can do that. And the why is like an engineer implemented this, but an engineer didn't implement that. Uh, I cannot get any kind of uh, good answer as to why some things are supported and some things are not. Uh, and if you're a young person now getting uh, starting in the world and you want to have a Gmail account and an email account associated with it and not have a whole bloody mess everywhere, uh, start, start with Gmail and make your account there and take care of it. Don't start creating accounts everywhere which where because uh, email accounts, I'm saying, because you're going to run into trouble eventually, I'm pretty sure. Um, other problems I have with Google um, is like they're supposed to use int artificial intelligence in Google News and in YouTube to, you know, select suggestions for me. And I've been on YouTube for a long time, and I've been in Google News for a long time, and they both know what I like and what I don't like to some extent. And they still, to this day, suggest stuff that I'm not interested in. Like on YouTube, if I go, uh, if I go into the my my uh, the playlist at some point. Somewhere, you know, there are some playlists that are mine and some that are generated by Google. And I'll always have Baby Shark in the playlist generated by Google. I don't want to listen to that song. I'm not interested. I told it I'm not interested. But I get Baby Shark. Why? I don't know. Um, and the news is the same thing. I did news sources that I've told it I'm not interested in. And you know they're part of a general conglomerate like Sinclair or something. I'm not interested. Every time I see something from that source, I tell Google, "Don't show it to me." And every now and then, there's one that sneaks into my uh, for you section, or or elsewhere. Sometimes it's elsewhere, but often it's in my for you section. <sighs> I'm not interested, and, and there's a, and there are more bigger problems actually. Like I'm not interested in entertainment, but you cannot remove the entertainment section. I'm not, I'm not interested in sports generally. I watch Formula One. That's it. I cannot remove the sports section. Uh, my Formula One's news. I could get them somewhere else. Um, I think Google News is is really, it's really crappy for users. Um, I still use it. Um, it's free. And therefore, I am the product. <laughs> um, but I don't think it's great. And I've looked at other systems and other places where I could get the news. And and they all come with all kinds of, of problems. Uh, either you have to pay through the nose or, or they're even more constraining than Google News. Uh, I remember some systems that were very, very constraining in terms of what you could get and how you could read it. Um, and you know, to, the, to, to to this list, and the list of my personal problems with Google is, but we're not we've not gone over everything. I think the Google devices that we have in the house in general, the the displays and the minis that listen to us, I think the quality of the of the service on those devices has gone down over the years. Um, Initially, I didn't have any problems with Norwegian. Now I do. Um, and there are more times where the device is just like it's sitting there with the lights spinning and thinking, like, what did this person say? Uh, I do get a lot of communication problems also with our home automation. Uh, so in general, you know, everything has gone down. Um, Lately, there's been even even more problems. I have a Chromebook, um, and Google at some point, I don't remember when, it doesn't really matter, but they made a release of the operating system that would brick the operating system, uh, the, the device, the Google Chrome. Luckily, I was not like 
waiting for an update and I didn't update it at that time. And I, when I learned of it, I decided not to press the update button because it would have bricked my device. I would not have been able to use it. I would have had to send it somewhere else. Or I don't know. I don't know how I would I would have fixed it, but it was not usable anymore. And the problem there is that somebody confused a a boolean uh, and I think it was an and or no or no. I don't remember when, but there was a boolean confusion. You know, ampersand ampersand versus just ampersand, or it could have been pipe pipe versus just pipe. Somebody confused it. Apparently. Google doesn't run a linter on their code, so nobody caught it, and it was released to the public. And that, to me, is a big, big, stupid mistake. I don't know what happened to the engineer who made that, that error, who was responsible at Google. Uh, in my book, this is a fireable offense. There would have to be a... a Damn good reason, like aliens came in or something affected the code after linting, or there would have to be a very good explanation for this. Otherwise, it's like you didn't care, you coded this, you didn't run the linter on it, or you ignored the linter error, you didn't care, you just pushed it and screw the users. Um, and a lot of people don't know about the Chromebook breaking because a lot of people don't have Chromebooks. But um, you know, I have one, and I kept them. Uh, I, I I kept informed, and uh, yeah, that's a big problem. Another problem with Google is that they generally stop supporting services, uh, and often there's no rhyme or reason uh, that we can detect. I mean, what what I think happens inside the company is that somebody looks at um, Somebody looks at the, the product and they say, well, it doesn't make enough money. How can we make more money? Oh, we can't make more money. Let's, let's kill it. Uh, they, killed, they, ki they killed the, the Google Reader, which, used, which I used to use to read news, and then I had to move on to something else. Uh, they've, they've killed something recently. I don't remember what brought product but that's like the product was released and then it was killed right away <laughs> it's like it's it's ridiculous and i i think they don't they don't care about what users um are doing and how they're dependent on google products they just kill stuff um in may 2018 they remove they some some sources are contradicting. Some places they say they completely remove do no evil from their code of conduct, and some other places say they de-emphasized de it. Uh, but to me, that's that's um, that's a sign of the times that Google, you know, they used to say, and I remember it from the, the start of the company, do no evil. Oh, that's a big statement for for a company. Do no evil because the problem with do no evil. Part of the problem is that evil is in the eye of the beholder. So you're at the mercy of third parties with that statement. They, they emphasized it in, in 2018 or removed it completely from the code of conduct um, because it was not sustainable. And I think part of it was the, the actions that they're taking. It's like, screw the user. This doesn't work. Screw the user. Uh, we're going to... Um, terminate this product. You don't think that screw the user is is complicated. It's possible that they did both, actually. Um, that is still somewhere, but it's not in the code of conduct. I don't know. Uh, but the de-emphasis is uh, relevant, in my opinion. And the help, so you, you see, I've given you a whole list and, and, and we're over half an hour of stuff. I could go on for another half hour easily. And you have this big list of problems with Google and you say, well, did you get help? 
Um, I did search for s solving some of the problems that I've encountered. Um, I've given them feedback, first of all. I've given Google feedback. They send me emails and they ask me how I feel about this email. Usually I don't, it's like, you're telling me stuff I already know. So I click the little frowny face, um, not useful. Uh, and I tell them and I've told them and, I, and there are videos like, for instance, on, on YouTube, some, some very pedestrian stuff, videos that tell lies on YouTube. I've told Google they've done nothing. As far as I know, I didn't go like go check back this morning or yesterday. As far as I know, they've done nothing. Um, you know, there's a there's a bunch of uh, false stuff about society and stuff and like that, and it's proven demonstrably false. I I tell them this is false. No, no, no. I give them the link explaining what the situation is, and they do diddly squat. So I've told them a lot of times that there are problems and they don't do anything. And remember, if you look at my videos on Google TV, the, the solution for my Google TV, one of my Google TV problems was to reset the device, reset this, reset that, reset your router. You encounter a lot of that too. It's people that, that respond to you and then they have a script and they have to follow the, the damn script. Um, which doesn't work at well at all with me because most of the time I've done everything they have on their script and it still doesn't work. Uh, what I've encountered also a lot when doing Google searches is I run into those forums about Google products where people can post problems and there's an expert responding. First of all, about every time I find something on those forums, the thread has been closed. So the message to the user is like, you have a problem, you found something where somebody had the same problem you do. Well, fuck you, we've, closing, we've closed it. That's one thing. The other thing is that besides being closed, there's some product expert, and those quotes are important, there's some products expert that came in, gave the person a solution. That person accepted the solution. I don't know why they accepted it. They could have accepted it because it fixed the problem, but it was not, you know, the, the one, the specific solution to that problem. So for instance, they will say sometimes, well, you know, you have a problem with this, reset your phone. And, in the process of resetting the phone, it's going to fix the data problem with that caused the user's problem. But maybe there would have been something more precise, like go into settings, do this, do that, twiddle this setting, and then you're going to be fine. Like, for instance, I have earbuds that have a problem when they pair with the phone for the first time, and I have to kill the app. So, so my solution is kill the app. And actually, I might have found a better solution now, which is going to the Bluetooth setting and then go back to the app, and the, the app is going to recognize your buzz. But for a long time, my solution was kill the app and restart it. The solution there could be restart the phone. It would do the, the exact same thing. Restart the phone is going to restart the app too. <laughs> uh, but it's not precise enough. Restart the phone for a problem with the phone, to me, it's a shitty answer. It's a bad answer. It's the answer that's going to fix a lot of problems, but it doesn't target the specific problem you were having. It's using, it's like the traditional, you know, you use a nuclear bomb to kill a, a mosquito. Well, yeah, you, the mosquito is dead. Everything is dead also around it. And I guess you don't have a, a mosquito problem anymore. You probably don't have... <laughs> any problems anymore because if the mosquito was in your vicinity and you bombed it, <laughs> you bombed yourself also. This is completely stupid. So most of the time you find an answer that the person has accepted. Oftentimes those answers are of the sort that they're shitty answers that tell you to reset everything. 
or they seem to be more precise, but they don't really fix anything. And then on top of that, the thread has been closed, so you cannot reply. What I've done for those cases, because my Google, Google doesn't give you any option there. You're there, you see an answer, it's a shit answer, it's not good quality. The, the discussion is closed and you have this piece of shit in your face telling you to do this. What can you do? The, the only option you have remaining is to report the answer. And I report those answers to Google. This may be the reason why they don't talk to me anymore. <laughs> uh, I said I didn't get any feedback about anything that I reported to them. But these answers are terrible, and I report them. And it, and it doesn't help Google because they're getting garb uh, garbage. Or maybe they've put they've set a flag on my account, and they say, this guy just sends us garbage, so we're not going to respond to him. Um, but I don't think I'm being unreasonable. And I think in the long term, it's going, just going to hurt them. So, uh, you know, we we're almost at... <laughs> three quarters of an hour on, on Google. So I'm going to conclude. And what I'm thinking right now, first of all, I think Google is suffering from attention deficit disorder. I mean, if companies can suffer from attention deficit disorder, Google is one of them. Uh, it goes from product to product, any which way. Uh, implements some features, doesn't implement other features. Say, screw the user. Yes, I did. I did do that. That's what Google is doing to us. Uh, screw the user. Um, in my view, that company has become too big. It can do whatever it wants. And they're still going to sell devices. Um, and what I'm... What I would like to see is for the government to come in and break up that company. Because right now, I think it's too big for its own breaches. And I don't know that it's going to fix everything. But uh, it will get their attention. You know, if the company is broken, it's, pr it's a pretty big deal. Um, it's going to get their attention. That's their option. Well, the other option is to step up their customer support game and start addressing the problems that their products already have and maybe stop acting like a damn unit with attention deficit and going from this project to that project to that project to that project. It's narrow down uh the scope of the company so yeah as i said i could go on and on and on and on i mean this is just notes that i've put together um uh, i'm not very happy with google right now um and as i said it varies from unit to unit you, my phones are pixel phones i don't buy anything else I, I i used to buy other brands but i've stopped doing that because i i Overall, it is overall the way I do it. It's cheaper than having a subsidy with a different company. Um, so I buy them straight out, and uh, there's no crap on the phone. It's all it's all stuff and mostly stuff that I want. And maybe like the keep thing for notes. I don't use it, but I bought a Samsung device once, and it everything was duplicated. You had the Google version of the app, and then you have the Samsung version of the app. And I did not want to use a Samsung version, so I, you know, I didn't log into any of that stuff, and I had to remove all that stuff from as much as possible from uh, the device, and it was a pain in the ass. And that's why I just buy I bought I bought a Chromebook. It only has the Google stuff on it. It doesn't have any extra, like oh, AT and T this or Samsung that or Ford this. It has what I install it and nothing else. Um, so yeah, um, Google sometimes, Google can do great things, but 
it's overall disconnected approach between projects and, and, and then their users is, is just a mess. Uh, so I'm going, I'm going to end it here. Um, please subscribe if you want more of this. Uh, give it the thumbs up, give it the thumb down, comment in the comments. Um, and uh, I'll see you next time.